Hey guys, welcome to Motion Talk. My name is Howard. I'm an engineer here at Sigma, and we are the creator of the DK2 and 2 Plus motion systems for your racing simulators. Uh, and today I want to cover uh, the topic of another very popular spec that people use to compare actuators with, and that's the maximum speed. Uh, so company A's actuators can go, say, 5 inches per second or 125 millimeters per second. And company B's actuators can go double that. So obviously, company B's actuators are much better, right? Uh, maybe yes, maybe not. Let's dive in and find out. Um, okay, so first I want to go a bit deeper into the orders of linear motion. Um, they were briefly mentioned in the first motion talk. Um, but in this episode, I really want to go a bit deeper into the fundamentals of linear motion and how actuators are actually commanded in, in the industrial world. Um, and I guess the normal academic approach to this topic is to explain mathematically uh, the relationships between the orders and how to take derivatives or integrals of each other, uh, the slope versus the area under the curve, etc. But uh, that's honestly really boring and very unrelatable stuff. So I'm just going to try to take a more practical approach to this. Uh, and starting with position, right? So we have an actuator and we want to move it from the most retracted position to the most extended position. So all the way in, all the way out, position A, position B. The same can be said about CNC machines or robotic arms or other industrial applications. So we have these two positions. How do we physically go from point A to point B? Let's use the velocity graph. So the velocity graph is the standard for industrial automation. Typically when a user makes a positional command to go from here to here, the machine basically just makes it happen. But what it's actually doing though is it's plotting a velocity graph. And here you can see that the vertical axis is speed and the horizontal axis is time. And this velocity graph here is the most common form of motion control. So uh, first we have to uh, slowly bring up the speed from rest from here all the way up to the maximum speed. And then we can maintain moving at the speed, this maximum speed for a while. And then we have to slowly ramp down to zero so that we come to a stop just in time to meet the positional command that we input. Now let's go ahead and add the second actuator from company B. And here you can see that the actuator from company B can go to a much higher speed. So it must be better, right? Um, actually, no. The speed itself actually doesn't make a difference because Imagine we're in space, um, and this is a very common analogy. Imagine we're in space, and we get into spaceship A. We accelerate in spaceship A to the maximum speed, and then we let off the throttle. As a matter of fact, we'll turn off the, the spaceship altogether, so it's just coasting aimlessly in space forever and ever at this maximum speed. And then we do the exact same thing to spaceship B, except we go to double the speed, and then we turn off the, uh, the, the spaceship and then we coast at double the speed. From a user's point of view, from B, if we're sitting inside, we would feel absolutely no difference uh, between being in spaceship A or B. Um, even if we go, let's say, 100 times the speed in spaceship B, we'd still feel absolutely no different than being in spaceship A or even being in completely at rest. Okay, so what do matter, though, are the next two orders of linear motion, and that's acceleration and jerk. And that's essentially these areas here. Okay, so what's the difference between acceleration and jerk? Acceleration in its purest form, and, and I think the best example I can provide is imagine if we're free falling in a skydiving scenario and imagine that there's no air resistance so we're just free falling and our speed keeps on increasing and increasing 
uh, until infinity or speed of light or whatever. Um, that's acceleration in its purest form, just a gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, uh, whatever. Now, jerk comes in when there's a change in acceleration. So in the same example, imagine that we're coming down and we go splat on the ground. That sudden impact, that sudden change in big acceleration is, is jerk. So why are we talking about this? What's the point? Um, because from a motion system, we would generally receive two types of sensation or feeling or haptic. Uh, one, as you might expect, is the positional change from, say, like a pitch or roll, right? So when we take a turn, our motion system uh, rolls our chassis to the side, and the IMU, or the accelerometer inside our brain, uh, is telling us that, okay, our gravity has just changed um, from a purely downward pull to a slightly angled pull, right? And our brain's going, okay, so this is what happens in real life too when you're taking a turn in a car. Um, great motion, great cue, you know, feels great. And second, we would also feel the acceleration or jerk from our motion system uh, because just like gravity or a really powerful drag racing car, the acceleration and jerk are very powerful sensations that we feel and our brains accept them as signals or cues for motion. But speed by itself uh, is not something that we can feel. Um, it's not something we can perceive. It's physically impossible. Okay, jumping back to our velocity graph. I think it's a bit misleading to say that the maximum speed doesn't matter at all because, in fact, it does. It helps create a larger envelope um, so that we could potentially have more acceleration and jerk. So as you can see here, uh, actuator B, by being able to uh, accelerate more, um, reaching a higher speed and decelerate faster as well, it's able to um, come to or arrive at the target position in a shorter amount of time than actuator A can. However, that's assuming that the motion algorithm of actuator B, the motion algorithm and, and, and the electrical system are utilizing or taking full advantage of, of this extra envelope, right? If the motion algorithm isn't sharp enough to uh, use the acceleration, or if the electrical system, let's say the servo uh, motors, aren't powerful enough to provide enough thrust to produce this, then what happens is something like this, where it's essentially using the same acceleration as actuator A, uh, or even something like this, where it's using a slower acceleration than actuator A. So in other words, in these scenarios, the extra capacity, um, the extra envelope created by the um, higher maximum speed is essentially wasted. Okay, and finally, some additional thoughts, uh, maybe a bit of rambling, but I find it very interesting to see these um, the very popular linear velocity type graphs. Uh, this type of motion control is really great for industrial and automation applications because in such environments, uh, the positional control or the accuracy is the single most important goal to achieve, right? For example, uh, we want to use a robotic arm to pick up a part and then place it uh, very precisely into a jig or a clamping fixture. And from there, say like a CNC machine, um, you know, it's there to perform incredibly fast machining uh, or material removal uh, with super accuracy, right? But what isn't important in these applications is the fluidity of the motion. And this is the reason why we have the robot dance, right? Because this is my pathetic attempt at a, a robot dance. But this type of movement is really the signature move of, of, of robots. Okay? Um, and here's a really good example of what I'm talking about. Uh, here you can see how cool the robots are. I mean, 
like look at the incredible synchronization and positional accuracy, right? It's much beyond what we can do as humans. But also look at the way they move. Like the, the movement is so um, inorganic, like it's not something that we can find in nature, right? Like this is the start of the supposed uh, katana fight. Just about. Okay, here we go. So, I mean, super cool stuff, but you can see that it's super robotic, right? Now, here's another really cool video. I mean, the gist of it is that there's a, a robot arm competing with a professional player. And yeah, so I mean, I have no idea how real this is. Like it is a marketing video. Um, I don't know whether a robot is really kicking a professional's butt, but um, I have no doubt that the, t the technology is, exists. I've personally seen such an exhibit at a, at a CES show allowing, allowing uh, attendees to uh, battle a round of ping pong against a robot. But what's really interesting to see here, I think, is that even though the robot is kicking butt, you can still you still can't help but to notice the difference between um, motion, right, of, of the robot and, and, then, and a real person. It's it's, it's completely different. Uh, anyways, super cool video. Check them out for yourself. So, anyways, yeah. So this is the main difference between industrial automation technology uh, versus um, sim, sim racing's motion technology, right? For us, uh, as a motion systems builder, our emphasis is placed on motion first, and then positional accuracy second. And obviously, that's not to say that the, the position the position isn't important because obviously we don't want uh, we don't want our actuators to like bottom out or or overextend, right? But the main essence of our motion system is the sensation and immersion that we can provide through our motion, which is essentially a, a haptic system, meaning it's it's by feel. Okay, and this is a great demo showing our motion control system named Velocity Trap. Uh, it's a pretty well loaded chassis right now, currently about 400 pounds with Joe sitting inside, he's not actually driving. Uh, this is using our new DK2 Plus actuators and running in a sort of Corsa. So um, what I want to show is this guy here. Uh, this is the, uh, it's a real time graphing tool that we developed for internal use. And it quickly became uh, an indispensable tool during our development. And what you're seeing here is that the blue line is the telemetry-driven positional commands, basically where the actuators need to go. And the red line is the closed-loop feedback that we get from the actuators, okay, and telling us, uh, reporting back to us on how closely we are following uh, the, the, the blue positional commands. And you can see that within about a hundred millisecond latency we can perform all the work that we need to do to make this happen okay and what's really cool is when I click on this right there okay and the purple line shows this beautiful and curvy velocity graph and it's nothing like the linear velocity graph that we saw earlier this is our velocity trap in its full glory it's, it's smooth it's curvy and, and continuous and precise because Using this curvy velocity graph, our actuators are able to report back and tell us that they're achieving such pre precise positional accuracy. And this is something we're pretty proud of, uh, proud of creating, and it's the reason why our system has such a smooth yet uh, sharp feeling to our motion. Yeah. And it has so much acceleration and jerk. Hey, so I'm just going to take the rest of the video from home because it's a Sunday. Uh, I just want to deeply apologize for the length of this video, guys. I, I really wanted to, to trim it down, but at the same time, I really feel like it was all kind of important. 
Um, and, and even then, we've only just skim, skimmed the surface of, of a really big topic. Um, so the summary of this motion talk is that <clears throat> the maximum speed of actuators, while it's an important spec to have, uh, is actually quite meaningless by itself without additional information. Um, like we've seen in the second motion talk, anybody can easily take the maximum RPM of a motor and multiply that by the, the ball screw lead uh, to get the actuator speed. But does the motion algorithm, for example, actually utilize all of that speed, right? And if it did, uh, does it provide enough acceleration and jerk to represent real world suspension characteristics? Um, like, can it reflect the oscillation nature of a soft suspension? Um, can I kick my ass hard when driving a really stiff race car? Um, <clears throat> and another really important thing is the uh, <clears throat> the electrical system. I mean, is it is it is the electrical system capable of providing enough power to do this while carrying full weight? You know, whatever the motion system is uh, rated for carrying. Uh, we've actually just done a a pretty cool video recently. It's a, it's a full send video of the DK2 uh, carrying the maximum weight and easily hitting the maximum speed of the actuators. Uh, if, you haven't, if you haven't seen it, I'll uh, include it in the link below in the description. Okay, and I'll, I'll shut up now. Sorry again, guys. I'll, uh, I really hope that you find this useful. Um, cheers.